So I'm going to talk about, as uh, I've done the last few years, about using these uh, backgrounding budgets that we kind of create here at NDSU and under some different scenarios for both steers and heifers uh, across North Dakota based on current prices of both cattle and production costs and, and everything else that we're dealing with this time of year as we're trying to make these um, uh, backgrounding decisions uh, across the state. And so initially, I want to do a little bit of a uh, defining uh, of, of some terms and some boundaries on what we're what we're considering here. And when I'm talking about if I mention weaned calves, just so we're all on the same page, I know everybody knows what weaned calves are, but uh, typically 500 to 600 weight, maybe up to 650 pounds. Uh, and this is typically the thing to keep in mind here. Also, it's the largest price difference between um, heifers and steers. OK, so uh, in other words, the price per hundred weight, typically ten, it, the, the, the lighter weight the calves are, the, 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 the greater the difference is between heifer and steer prices uh, per hundred weight. Then, you know, backgrounded or, or heavier weight calves, this is going to be in the 750, sometimes 700 to, to 900 pound category. Uh, often this price gap closes uh, between heifers and steers per hundred weight from 15 to 20 bucks, as much as 25 bucks ahead in the, in the lighter weights down to, down to about five, uh, five dollars per, per hundred weight. And so that's when we're talking about closing that price slide between heifers and steers and often why he uh, backgrounding heifers, as we'll see here in a bit, is, is so beneficial is, is for this reason, uh, right here that this, this price slide, uh, closes. And then we have our finished cattle category. Um, I'm, pushing those uh, animals up to 1,350 pounds. And in, in this category, the price gap between them, the, the slide difference, it, it mostly disappears uh, in this category because they're they're essentially finished. So this is what I, and, and now when we're talking about uh, lighter weight calves versus heavy weight calves, okay, uh, we're all aware that the lighter the weight, the, the higher uh, value they have per, per hundred weight typically, but overall, the weight, the, the the overall value is lower because you know what a nine hundred pound calf uh, it, it just weighs more, 50, you know, fifty percent more than a six hundred pound calf. So per hundred weight, it may be a little bit lower, but uh, it, it overall value it tends to be higher. So this is just how the price slide as of you know twenty eighteen had 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 behaved, essentially showing uh, the price per hundred weight as the weight of the calves tends to tends to go up. All right, so these next ones I want to talk about are concepts that that Tim had hit on, and it has to do with the price of corn. Uh, and these are a little bit dated, but they come from uh, Kansas State University, and they they illustrate it pretty nicely on a few concepts of, of backgrounding that we uh, deal with or, or even finishing out uh, calves. And that is that as the price of corn goes up, so and we and we can use corn just in, in a sense as the price of feed. OK, so in this case, we're just using corn, but the price of feed uh, as well, which tends to get pulled up with corn often. And when you look, the highest price corn, uh, $3.52 per bushel when this, this study was done. And what you notice is that line is flatter. So that's the one here with the, the bl blue blue diamonds here. That's $3.52. So the price difference uh, per hundredweight is the lowest when the price of feed is the highest. OK, so why is that true? Well, because it costs quite a bit. To, it costs more to put weight on per pound. OK, so it drives down the price of feeder calves, lighter weight or weaned calves and pulls up the price of 800 weight, 900 weight calves because it costs more to get the weight on. And uh, feedlots and finishers are, are, are saying, OK, well, there's less risk now uh, of feed prices uh, being volatile or whatever, because this is a heavier weight animal and I'm willing to pay more for it. So you get this relationship where it drives down the price of feeder cattle a little bit, drives up the price of, of heavier weight calves and you get a flatter line. When corn prices are cheap, relatively, in this case, it was, you know, way, way low at $1.68 a bushel. But but the relationship is the same. When feed prices are low, the price of lightweight calves goes up because there's a lot of money to be made with cheap feed in order to pack the pounds on these, these lighter weight calves. And then the relative price of, of heavier weight calves goes down. That doesn't mean 
all, all the heavier weight calf prices in total go down. It just means the relative price of feeder calves versus heavier weight calves, uh, it, it, it moves that line this way. Okay, so it could be the case that all cattle prices go up. It's just that feeder cattle prices or lighter weight calf prices go up faster than the heavier weights when uh, when feed prices are are low. So that's that sort of inverse relationship. And Tim talks about that all the time with respect to corn prices and uh, cattle prices. And then finally, and this one can be a bit confusing if you haven't seen it before. And this has to do with what uh, fed cattle prices do on the on the relationship uh, of the price spread. And what it essentially says is the higher that fed cattle prices are, the bigger the price gap is between lighter weight calves and heavier weight calves. And that's because the risk is, is, is lessened. Okay, if I got high fed cattle prices, I want to as cheaply as I can pack the pounds on to make as much money as possible. So I'm willing to pay a bit of a premium for lighter weight calves. Uh, and, and I'm not so worried about uh, uh, the cost of the feed as much. Um, and so I'm not going to pay a premium for the heavier weight calves. And then vice versa, if the if fed cattle prices are low, then that brings up uh, the, the relative value, not the overall value, but the relative value of heavier weight calves, because uh, there, there's, there's less risk. Uh, the price is low, but they're heavier. So there's less risk. I'll pay a little bit more for them, which, which kind of covers me if it, if it takes a turn, because perhaps the margins are a bit thinner. All right. So in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's how a lot of that works. And then we look at some seasonality, uh, that's going, that goes on with this too. And that is, uh, U S cattle prices by month. And this is only showing three years and, and, and it's not so important to focus in on the price in any given year, but so much that it, we tend to see that spring cattle prices, okay, tend to be higher than than fall, and that's for obvious reasons. Uh, most most areas, especially in the plains, northern plains, they they calve in the fall, so you're going to have more animals uh, hitting the market. Uh, but you know, feeders need need new cattle coming in, at, you know, all the time, so they may have to pay a bit of a premium to get them. And and there's other reasons, but but. Uh, for the most part, you, we can see that those, those spring calf prices tend to be a bit higher. And that's another way that, you know, backgrounded uh, cattle can, can, can actually pay. So moving into the scenarios. Good news this year, uh, the uh, feed prices are lower uh, than they had been last year. Um, I'm just showing this slide real quick to shoot, use uh, and show some of the assumptions. The biggest ones uh, yardage, uh, in our budgets, it's, it's 35 cents a day. I, I cranked that up to 45 just, just due to some energy costs and, uh, some other factors. Interest is much higher than last year's. Uh, we're using eight and a quarter, but I've seen some operating node interest rates as high as nine. So I may be a little bit too low on those, but these feed costs have, have come down, uh, compared to a year ago. And here's our six scenarios that we're going to look at here. Uh, a, a, a low rate of gain steer scenario from 500 weight to 800 weight. The cost of gain on that was a, a dollar three uh, per day per head per day. Uh, 2.8 pounds, so a moderate uh, ration here, uh, moving from 575 weight to 855 weight, and those cost a uh, dollar 32 a day. And then a, a finished steer scenario, 3.6 pounds uh, per day ration, pretty aggressive. Going from 575 to 1375, uh, and that cost per day is a buck 80. And then our heifer scenarios. So a lighter weight heifer scenario at 1.7 pounds. Okay, so in this one, we're going from 450 to set almost 750, a little over. Feed cost on that's a little under a buck a day, 98 cents a day. A uh, little bit heavier weight heifer, same same rate of gain, but a little bit heavier to start off and a little bit heavier uh, when we when we sell. That feed cost $1.07. All right. And then uh, 2.8 pounds, so much more aggressive uh, average daily gain, 525 to 805. And the feed cost on that obviously is going to be higher because it's a more aggressive ration at a, at $1.28 per day per head. So here's just the comparison um, between the two. I apologize on my last scenario. I had $1.07. It's actually $1.08, like you see here in the corner. Not a big deal, but makes about a dollar plus difference. So it's not a huge deal, but I just wanted to, I didn't get it changed on the last slide, but the dollar eight is correct. So last year's feed prices, you can see 
the, the ones in red are last year's uh, per head per day costs with the exact same scenarios. Uh, this year, quite a bit cheaper, uh, again, because those feed costs this year, uh, corn prices, meal prices, silage, all that stuff, a lot cheaper this year than it was a year ago. So, so obviously that's going to, that helps out a good bit. All right, so we start with the steer scenarios, and this is the the prices I'm I pulled, and they're pretty pretty much the same as Tim's. They're I averaged uh, the prices for for instance for your five fifty weights or your or your five hundred weight uh, animals, and then I used uh, the projected price around that two hundred and thirty bucks for the for the sales price, which is pretty close to exactly what what Tim had had just mentioned. Um, and again, you know, the market fluctuates when you got record high prices, you got record high volatility. So depending on the week that you view this uh, could be off quite a bit, could be a little low, could be a little high. It just depends. Um, and we'll talk about obviously the and Tim talked about the risk management uh, tools that are available to avoid some of that. Uh, and then for live cattle prices, I use the futures uh, for finished cattle for that one finishing scenario. And I have $170 per uh, per hundred weight for finished cattle on average for summer of 24, which is when our finished scenario would, would end uh, in this particular presentation. So scenario one, 500 to 800 weight, uh, 1.7 pounds per day. Uh, here's the ration grass. Uh, and I thank Carl for, for helping put these rations together and, and, and the costs, a uh, big part of that, obviously. Silage, DDGs, um, some salt comes out to $1.03 uh, per day. And then so using our uh, NDSU budgets or spreadsheet, I do some modifications to it just for this presentation, but uh, you can see that scenario up here. Uh, set projected selling price, $230. Uh, and, this, and this is real important to do. So make sure you do this, is when you bring the animal into your backgrounding operation, make sure they're priced you know, accordingly, obviously, to what you would have been able to get if you had taken them to uh, to the sale barn on, you know, uh, around this time of year. In this case, I've got it at 281 bucks per hundred weight for these for a, for a 500 weight steer projected selling price of uh, 800 pound animal, $230. There's our feed costs, our interest, our yardage. I I dialed down the trucking costs from last year as diesel prices are a little bit lower and then our death loss would shrink. So all that to say that we essentially break even in this scenario. And this has been true for uh, the years that I've been putting this together. It's on a, a limited ration or a lower ration for steers. It is really tough to come up with or arrive at a number that is much above break even. The biggest reason is they're in the yard for 176 days to accomplish this. And you got this yardage fee hanging out there of 45 cents per day. You know, that's costing you plus plus interest, obviously, is adding up. And the only way that this really works is if you're able to really get these feed costs down or your yardage fees are, are just substantially lower than this somehow. Or the market uh, shoots up and, and essentially you're speculating on the market taking a turn. But all things equal, the, the low ration steer uh, scenario rarely is above break even. It's usually at break even. And and the, and of, often that's because, you know, steer prices for these 500 weight tends to be pretty high. And that's $281. All right. Here's our second scenario. A uh, bit more aggressive, 2.8 pounds per day. Obviously, that's going to cost more to accomplish. So we're up to $132 uh, per uh, or $132, $1.32, excuse me, uh, per head per day. And so this uh, this ration changes a bit. Uh, you're putting in some corn, some DDGs, grass, legume, hay, et cetera. Now, this one is a, a obviously a much more profitable scenario, uh, more profitable than the lower 1.7 pound per day, uh, mainly because you're, you're only in the yard 100 days instead of 176. So yardage isn't eaten away at it. And in this case, our return is about fifty-seven dollars uh, per head, and and really not not a whole lot of uh, difference in there. It is it does cost more per day, obviously, but it's the same yardage, uh, the same interest rate. But you'll notice the interest expense is lower because they're not in there. You're not financing the cost of uh, production for as long, and that interest adds up. And as a result, we wind up turning a you know a fifty 
57 dollars per head profit on the steers and all we did was was increase the feed to them and try to try to put on about 2.8 pounds and it's the same essential prices 281 dollars beginning value uh and then coming out at 230 230 dollars per, per hundred weight on that scenario then our final steer scenario in this case is our finished uh finished steer scenario 575 to a 1375 pound animal at 3.8 pounds per day again obviously that's going to be a lot more costly uh to to put that much weight on that fast uh more more pounds of feed going in to to pull that off and so we we wind up with a with a finished uh finished uh, uh steer and I'll go straight to the budget on this uh, here's that projected selling price, and this is based on the summer futures for for fed fed cattle, 175 bucks. Beginning value on this a bit lower because it's a heavier weight calf coming in at 271 dollars per hundred weight is our feed cost, and the finished steer expected return is 127 dollars uh, and 28 cents per head, uh, and 57 cents per day profit. I put those in there just so you know um, how much you're essentially putting on or gaining doing what doing what's being done. But with this scenario to keep in mind, and I'll talk about this toward the end too, I mean, that's a long time. 222 days is a long time for a lot of stuff to happen in the cattle markets. So if somebody was is, is looking at taking something like this on, uh, putting together some kind of risk protection program, LRP or, or what have you, is really important from the standpoint of, and I, I'm going to show a scenario at the end, that if this if this 175 here because the 271 is locked in i mean once you bring the calf into your into your lot that price is paid okay the feed costs can fluctuate some interest can fluctuate as well but it's probably not going down anytime soon but if i manipulate this projected selling price and move it downwards uh not even a lot 10 15 percent this this turns really red really fast and so 222 days is an awful long time to be be hanging out there uh, hoping that that things don't take a turn. And, and it's like Tim said, you don't have to buy the highest priced policy uh, out there. For, you, you just got to figure out what your break even price is and, and then put a floor in so that at the very least, uh, you know, eight, nine months from now, uh, we're, we're not losing our shirt. All right, to the heifer feeding scenarios. All right, and here's the prices. I, I pulled them uh, somewhat recently, you know, pretty much following, tracking along with exactly what Tim quoted. I'm using averages because, again, depending on the day you check, could be off by five, six, seven bucks a hundred weight, you know, limit up or limit down in any given day. So this is more for planning purposes, but but you got to know that when you take one a, a calf into your backgrounding operation whatever the price is that's you know that's what it is that's what you got to jot down so our first scenario a low average daily gain 1.7 pounds a day and we're starting with a pretty lightweight heifer 450 pounds and taking her up to 756 and just under a buck per day to to pull that off is what we're projecting based on the the current feed prices 98 cents a day that takes about 180 days to accomplish, and look, almost almost $90 a head, uh, 49 and a half cents per day. Uh, and the biggest the biggest reason is is a, a big reason for that. If you look, the projected sales price 220 bucks, and the beginning value, you know, the beginning value is considerably lower uh, coming in. And this is for a 450 weight heifer. So I mean, if if it was a, a lighter weight steer, that'd be quite a bit higher than this if you're looking at a comparison when I was using 281 to bring the steers in at five five and a quarter and then the projected sales price that if you just look at the if you just look at the cash markets how how much that gap closed this is what I was talking about before and this is where we get some of these gains that I'm and this isn't the the it as profitable of a, a, a the most profitable scenario but even at a pretty modest rate of gain, we're looking at almost $90 per head uh, backgrounding these, these lightweight heifers, even on a, on a moderate ration. Uh, pulling in the, the uh, uh, 1.7 pound per day heifers from 550 to 850. So we're starting with a larger, a larger calf and, and, and selling a larger calf. That's going to, that's going to cost more per day, even though our average daily gain is a little bit lower. And it's fairly similar to the last scenario. Essentially, 
whether you start with a 450 weight or a 550 weight, if you feed out to 750, 850, you're looking at 85 or so dollars uh, per head uh, in both of those scenarios. So again, a lot of that coming from closing that price slide gap, uh, that projected sales price, you know, dropped a little because I went from 800 to 850. But the beginning value, I mean, is quite a bit lower. If you'll recall, steers at 550 were closer to 280 bucks. All right. So, you know, $40, $40 drop for heifers uh, coming into your operation at 550 versus steers. And that a big reason for the explanation of this $80, $84 per day, despite 176 days on feed. OK, so I just want to make that clear. That's that's why that's happening. That's why you see it and uh, and why, you know, backgrounding heifers in North Dakota has typically been a, a money making uh, endeavor, especially when you, you know, use a lot of the tools that are available. And then our final scenario in this is uh, 525 to 805, but we're putting trying to put on weight quite a bit faster, going from 1.7 to 2.8. Again, that's going to cost more, $1.28 per, per day uh, to put that put weight on that fast. And then obviously we're going to have to include some more in the ration to do it. But what that does is it drops the days on feed from, you know, 176 to 100, which is, you know, what you saw in, in the last scenario. Okay. Projected uh, selling price, the same beginning value coming in. It's still a 525 or 550 waiter. So the same. Okay. And what do we notice? A really strong profit on this one, almost $172 per head. Uh, if you, if you go the more aggressive ration route or $1.72 per head per day. Uh, and, and in this case, uh, the value of putting on the weight uh, it, it is adding up as well as the shorter term in the lot, only 27 and a half bucks in interest. Uh, the lot costs aren't adding up as fast. You're down to $45 because it's 45 cents over 100 days. And we've closed the price slide gap. So this is sort of a, all the benefits um, of backgrounding, uh, especially with respect to heifers, are all coming together. In, in this in this particular scenario with a with a more aggressive ration so shorter days in the lot closing the price light gap uh et cetera et cetera it's just this is this i've been doing this now uh three or four years and every every time that i do it whether it's a leaner year or a stronger year this tends to be the most profitable scenario almost every single time unless there's something kind of strange going on with fed cattle, uh, you know, live cattle prices or something like that, then sometimes finishing can be the, can be the ticket as well. So here it is in summary, all six of our scenarios. And, and I just wanted to put this in there because as I go through that, I'm going through spreadsheets and I'm going through the, the rations and everything and here how you can compare it. Uh, the, the low rate of gain on steers from 500 to 800, it's pretty much a break even proposition. Uh, more aggressive ration, 525 to 805. Yep, there's money to be made there, you know, $57 a head. And if you're going to background a bunch of heifers anyway, um, and it's not going to take a bunch of extra overhead and effort to do it, you might as well do it and go ahead and and and, and hopefully make around 50, 60 bucks per head there. Finishing uh, is profitable as well. We've got strong live cattle prices, uh, fed cattle prices. So you could be looking at making as much as $127, $130 a head. The heifers are the ticket right now, uh, $90, $85. And even compared to our, our uh, uh, finished steer scenario, right now that, that aggressive heifer ration, uh, 2.8 pounds uh, with these feed prices and these current cattle prices, that one's, that one's the highest overall profit loss per head out of all the scenarios that I run by by a pretty wide margin. And again, it's because of that, uh, you know, perfect storm of, of, of things coming together that's in favor of heifer backgrounding, making that happen. So as I said before about putting in a floor, especially when it comes to the longer term uh, decisions that are being made, I just want to use an example here. So if I take the 550 to 850 weight heifer scenario, which is the 1.7 pound per day, okay? If I increase feed costs 20% over the projection, so I go from $1.08 per day to $1.30 per day. So let's say I totally whiffed on my feed cost calculations. They're actually 20% higher, maybe even 30% higher. 
my profit drops from $84 per head to about $45 per head. Okay. So that's not great, but it's not the end of the world. I'm still making a profit. I'm still covering overhead. I'm still covering everything else. And I'm actually, actually making a profit in the end. On the flip side, if my 850 weight heifer projection declines from two, let's just say 10%, that's not a massive swing. Okay. 10% in that amount of time, 176 days or so from $216 to 194, I go from an $84 profit to a $92 loss that fast. So I can increase feed costs, my projected feed costs 10%, 20%, 30%, and still have this remaining above zero, you know, or at least breaking even or whatever. What I cannot have with with these the, the price of these CAS coming in, I cannot have them going down 10% or 20%, especially at these prices. Uh, it, that would be an, you know, an absolute disaster. That's a disaster. And that's why we're really emphasizing um, putting in a floor uh, at these prices. It's not that we expect cattle prices to, to decline. Uh, you know, the expectation is that they're going to continue to go up. It's just that the cost of them declining is so severe at these high prices. It would, it's nice to put in a floor. And it's like Tim said, you, we hope we never use it. Our, our goal would be to put in, you know, a break even, or if you want to, maybe a slightly above break even, and we never use the thing, right? That cattle prices, uh, calf prices continue to go up this spring, and it just gets put into our budget as a cost of doing business. That's the ideal scenario. But if the worst case scenario happens and they do fall 10%, 20%, this at least makes sure that we don't absolutely, you know, lose our shirt doing something like this and, and we're, we're good to go the next year. So that's, that's a lot of the reason that we, that we're really, you know, pushing this, this risk protection tool is it's a way to ensure that we don't wind up in a scenario where the loss is just so severe that, that it puts us in a bind. You know, that's the, that's the last thing we're after. Mm -hmm.